Hi guys. So today we are working on section 16.5 histographs. Now, I'm almost positive you haven't heard of a histograph before, or at least you haven't heard them called by that name before. But I know for a fact that you have worked with histographs before. In fact, they're one of the first types of graphs that you ever worked with. A histograph is a bar graph. That's what a histograph is. It's a bar graph. Now, your book is insisting that histographs are special bar graphs, which have to do with ranges. So have to do with ranges. So if I have data like ages or something like that, and I want to know how many three to five year olds how many three to five year olds there were going on a certain ride versus how many six to eight year olds versus how many nine to 12 year olds versus how many 13 to 16 year olds versus how many 17 to 19 year olds. Okay. I could make a bar graph. I could sit here and I could write the numbers up the side and I could put in exactly how many there was and then I could do it that way. And they insist that your book says that this is a histograph. Everywhere else I have ever looked will tell you that you could also say how many three-year-olds, how many four-year-olds, how many five-year-olds, how many six-year-olds, how many seven-year-olds, and so on and so forth, make bars for each of them, and that's still a histograph. So for the purposes of the book, we are going to be calling just ones where it gives ranges for the numbers a histograph, but in like everywhere else, a histograph doesn't have to be a range, it can just be that number. Um, so they're talking about how frequently something happens, which is the number of times that it happens and the amount of time that they're talking about. Um, so we can then look at these and we can read them and over to the, I think you're going to find this, sec this entire section to be fairly easy to be perfectly honest with you. So let me draw up the first number line and then I'll get back to you and because we're going to go into the book already. The histographs are very straightforward. We don't have that many notes for them at all. Right, just a sec. Okay, so there's a number line. I wrote it in pen. I hope you can read it. I decided I was not going to mark every single line like your book did. I only marked every five, but I do have all of the lines there. So we have our data, which we can then put in. And I have 25. I'm going to put an X there, uh, 229s, uh, 130, a 33, a 34, 235s, a 36, a 39, a 42, and a 44. Okay? So I put in all of my X's. You need to put in all of the X's inside your book. It tells us which intervals it wants us to use. So we go up here and we separate it out using their intervals. Their first interval is 20 to 29. So 
everything down here goes in the first interval, okay? 20 to 29. Our second interval is 30 to 39. So everything from here over to here goes in the second interval. Our third interval is 40 to 49. So everything from here to here to out there goes in our third interval. And then we just fill in the chart. We literally just fill in the chart with how many we have. So here in the first interval, we have one, two, three. Second interval, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And third interval, one, two. There, we're done with the chart. Like I said, this is a really easy section. So letter C says we are now going to analyze the data. How was the data collected? Um, I think I'm going to pick a different color simply so that you'll be able to see it better. How was the data collected? How many data values were there? What is the mean, median, range, and IQR of the data? Okay, so oh. our data was members. So how many people do we have? Three plus seven is 10 plus two is 12. So 12 basketball players shot 50 free throws. Shot 53 throws. Okay, so that's what we know. 12 basketball players shot 53 throws. Um, the mean, so that is the average. So we go. 25 plus 229s plus 30 plus 33 plus 34 plus 235s plus 36 plus 39 plus 42 plus 44. And then we divide that entire number that you got there by 12. And we end up with 34.25. This is why we have our calculators. Um, the median, the absolute middle of the numbers falls somewhere between 34 and 35. Halfway between, remember we're counting in, Halfway between 34 and 35 is 34.5. The range is our largest number, which is 44, minus our smallest number, which is 25. So 44 minus 25 is... 19 and our IQR. In order to do the IQR, we have to come up with the half of the half. So we already know that our median is between, let me change my color again. Our median is between the 34 <clears throat> is between the 34 and the 35. So that is our median right there. Halfway in between these, boom, boom, boom. So it is halfway between the 29 and the 30. Boom, boom, boom. Halfway between 36 and 39. Okay, 
36 and 39 halfway. Uh, so we have both 37 and 38, and then halfway between the two of them is 37.5. So 37.5, which is right there. So then we end up with 37.5 minus 29.5, which ends up giving us zero point. Can't do seven minus nine, so that becomes a two. 17 minus nine is eight. Did I do that one wrong? Oh, I think I did. 36 and 39. Halfway between 36 and 39 is 37.5. Yeah. And then between 29 and 30 is 29.5. Huh. Okay. The only reason why I'm sitting here saying that is because they say the, the book says the IQR is six. The IQR is not six. The IQR is eight. Hmm, that's weird. Okay, IQR eight. All right, so pause that if you need to. I am moving on to the next page. Reflect, number one says, can you use the data plot to find the mean and median of the data. Can you use the frequency table? Why or why not? Okay, so as far as the mean and the median, the data, pl the dot plot gives us all of the exact numbers that we need. So, number one, I can use the dot plot because it gives exact numbers, which we need for when we're doing it. I cannot, I can't use the intervals because I do not know because I don't have the exact numbers. Okay, so we can't do that. Number two, how do you find the number of data values in a data set from a dot plot? How can you find the number of data values from a frequency table? So if all I was given was a dot plot, I could count the dots. If all I was given was a frequency table, I could add the frequencies. That's all. So if you're given a dot plot, you count the dots. If you're given a interval table, you count the frequencies and you add them all together. And that's how you know how many cases there were of it. Um, <clears throat> making a histogram. So it is showing separating it out and then making a bar graph based upon the information that they have in the intervals. I am moving on to page 481. Number three, suppose a bird watcher, suppose the bird watcher, I guess we had a bird watcher on the previous page, continues his observation for three more days and collects these new data values, five, 18, and two. How would you change the histogram to include this data? Okay, five, 18, and two. 
I would, so the two would go in with the one and four, which was at eight to begin with. I would change the one to four interval to nine. I would change the five to eight interval to five. And what's the last value it wanted us to add in? It wanted us to add in 18. Uh, 18. Really? Um, <coughs> I would make a new interval for 18. I would make a new interval to include 18 at one bar high. The new interval, given that all of the intervals seem to be um, a smallish range, would probably be something like 17 to 19 or something like that. Uh, we would have to include the 17 inside our interval range because the previous range does not include 17. So that would have to be our starting number. But if we wanted to make it 17 to 20, we could make it 17 to 20. If we wanted to make it just 17 to 18, we could make it just 17 to 18. That is a choice that's up to you and you can decide how big you want it to be. Our starting number would have to be a 17 though because otherwise 17 isn't in the graph at all and it has to be in the graph somewhere. Uh, number four, Kim has started rating each movie she sees using a scale of one to 10 on an online site. Here are her ratings so far. Okay, so there is a uh, couple of ways that you can do this. Uh, let me get my graph paper. Okay, just a second. Okay, so I am just going to make this graph over here in this quadrant. I realize that that's the first quadrant, but this quadrant is much easier for you to see. So I'm going to be doing it in this quadrant over here. Um, so we can make this the zero right here. That's fine, we can keep that as a zero. Two, four, no, sorry, not two, um, starts with one, two, three, four. Oh no, wait, I'm looking at the wrong graph. Huh, that's why I'm getting confused. Two, four, six, eight, okay? So each of those ones is for that. I then go down here and I will do this, frequency one to two, three to four, five to six, seven to eight, nine to 10. So in this particular one, each one <coughs> is in a set of two ratings. So one to two, three to four, five to six, seven to eight, nine to 10. I am not going to bother with putting in my dots and segmenting it off and all of that kind of stuff. I'm just going to go straight through her data and add in one extra bar every time that she decides on one of her things. And I'm going to switch to a different color, so hopefully it'll show up a little clearer. Okay, so first off, she got a six. So I fill up half a space for one six. A nine, which goes there in the nine to 10 slot, an eight, which goes in one there in the eight slot. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so we are going to do another five, 
another seven, a seven, a four, uh, two eights. That'll be that entire thing. A three, <clears throat> a seven, an eight, a seven, a five, a one, a ten. Okay, so that's what mine ended up looking like. All right, so that's my bar graph. That's my histograph, sorry. Not a bar graph, it's a histograph. And so I ended up with a total value of one score between one and two, two scores between three and four, three scores between five and six, seven scores between seven and eight, and two scores between nine and 10. You should have gotten exactly the same thing on yours. All right, so jumping down to the bottom of 481, analyzing a histograph, Let's see what we can do. I swear I have too much stuff on this desk. Okay, um, number five, use your histogram from your turn in number four. Okay. There we go. There's our histogram from your turn in number four. Now, looking at this, what are some things that you could tell from the shape of the distribution? Um, well, I could tell you a couple of different things. You can really choose whatever you want to about this. You can sit here and you can say, Kim gives a lot of seven to eight ratings. You could say that she does that. She typically likes the movies that she goes to see. She gives a lot of the seven to eight ratings. That's something that you could say. You could start giving exact numbers. You could say, Kim gave three, five to six ratings. <clears throat> or you could say um, one to two is the lowest amount of ratings that Kim gave. It doesn't really matter. However you wanna write down, it's just some information that that graph that you made could tell you about. So over on Guided Practice, page 482, Wendy kept track of the number of text messages. Okay, so let's get away from this one. Wendy kept track of the number of text messages that she sent each day for three weeks. So we need to complete this fluency table. Um, Okay, so you can make the interval whatever you want to. What they're expecting you to make it though is this. So interval, frequency, and they give you zero to nine. So you have some idea of what they're looking for. They want you to do 10 to 19, 20 to 29, and 30 to 39, okay? That's how they basically want it to go. They already put all the numbers in order for you. So you just need to count up until you get to where you're at. Um, so one, two, three, four, from zero to nine. One, two, three, three, from 10 to 19. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, from 20 to 29. And one, two, three, four, five, from 30 to 39. 
Number two, complete the frequency table and the histogram. So that was number one, this is number two. Just a sec. So we have our interval and our frequency. Bump. One to seven, eight to 14, 15 to 21, and 22 to 28. Okay, so, um, all right, this one is a little out of order. So this is what I'm going to do to figure out how it is. I'm gonna put little tally marks there and then I'm actually going to write down what the number is after I finish tallying everything up. So I have 18, 20, 22, 26, 10, 12, 16, 18, 7, 8. Okay, so I have 1 from 1 to 7, 3 from 8 to 14, 4 from 15 to 21, and 2 from 22 to 28. So when I go over to make the graph, I'm going to turn you off for a second and make up the so I can now take the information that I have up here and I can go, all right, so one to seven was one. Uh, eight to 14 was three. Come on, really guys? There we go. 15 to 21 was four. And finally, 22 to 28 was 2. And there is my histograph for it. Number three. Really? Number three says, what are some conclusions you can make about the distribution of the data? Um, well, this had to do with seats available in cafes in his town. So I can say most cafes have between eight and 21 seats available. Because I have three between eight and 14 and I have four between 15 and 21. So most cafes have between eight and 21 seats available. Uh, number four. Sorry, I was just reading what they have written down. Here, I'll tell you exactly what they have written down. It's a possible answer. Only one cafe has less than seven seats available. The bars increase in height until they reach the interval for 15 to 21 seats, and then they decrease in height, showing that most cafes have 21 or fewer seats. Um, <laughs> Sometimes I do not know where they're getting these answers that they get from. They just seem to pull them out of thin air. Number four, how could you display data in a histogram? Um, well, I could choose which interval to use and then show the frequencies in that interval. So, 
<clears throat> you can pause there if you're not done writing, but I am going to leave you to do the independent practice yourself. I am going to give you this little bit of advice though, where it does not tell you what intervals they are planning on using. Look at the intervals that they already used for the beginning one. Remember up here, it only gave us the zero to nine, but then it went 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39. So you see each time it started with the zero in the ones place and ended with the nine in the ones place. All right. So if it seems to be doing intervals like that, if it goes um, <clears throat> zero to four, five to nine, um, 10 to 14, 15 to 19, 20 to 24. That means that it's going by five. So every interval has a set of five numbers there. Here we have a set of 10 numbers for each of them. Here we have a set of seven numbers for each of them. So you can look at it and you can go, okay, so how many numbers do they seem to be using for their interval? And that's how you can guess what intervals they want you to use for the rest of it. Good luck and have a good day. See you later.